So when we stop thinking for a moment, we're introduced to open intelligence. When we stop thinking and just identify what is looking, what is sensing, what is knowing, boom, there is open intelligence. Alert, clear, cognizant. And then all the data that we experience, all of the thoughts, all of the emotions, all of the sensations, which we call data in the Balance View Training, the data are inseparable from open intelligence. Without open intelligence, we wouldn't know any of the data. So our, what is our most comprehensive type of intelligence? That which knows everything. So just reflecting on stopping thinking and recognizing an intelligence that doesn't require anything to be there. It cannot be taken away. Naturally present. It is at rest. And at the same time, it's vividly potent. So just taking a moment to identify that quality about ourselves. And in this training, we have the phrase, short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times until this open intelligence becomes absolutely obvious, reliable, available at all times, regardless of the stream of data. Like we've been talking about for the past month in these open meetings is that Conventionally, we give data independent meaning in nature, meaning that we think that they have a power or an influence of their own, that they somehow <laughs> independently exist within this basic space. When we just stop for a moment, how could, how could a thought be separate from the space from which it is appearing? How can the thoughts be separate from your own intelligence? How could your emotions be separated out from your own intelligence? How could your sensations be separated out from intelligence, from open intelligence? So reflecting on that short moment by short moment, we don't need to ponder it and analyze it. So something that helped me tremendously was short moments of resting body and mind whenever I naturally remembered to do so. Short moments of acknowledging that my intelligence that I identified when I stopped thinking is naturally at rest. So too, all data rest as open intelligence. The thoughts at their essence are at rest. The sensations, all of the dynamic display is naturally at rest in this basic space of open intelligence. Now when we rely on short moments, this becomes more and more instinctively recognized how all data are inseparable from open intelligence. Whether it has a positive description or a negative description or a neutral description. Through short moments of allowing descriptions to be as they are, more and more we see we can allow things to be as they are. So internal dialogue is a it's a very practical example. I mean, everyone here has their own internal dialogue. If we turned it up right now and played it over the loud system, it would make uh, a melodious tune. <laughs> it would range from heavy metal to symphonies to <laughs> funky beats to outright interesting noises that we've never heard before to just a lot of fizzle. So, in my own case, <laughs> The internal dialogue was what was really driving me, yeah, a little bit in a tense kind of way. I was always monitoring my internal dialogue and um, constantly gauging how I'm feeling, seeing how can I fit in, what do I want to say to that person. When I wake up in the morning, do I have the right sensations? Throughout the day, am I having the correct emotions? Ooh, I like that sensation, I like that emotion, and then five minutes later, oh, uh, but now I feel a little, little bit queasy, and now I'm angry, and now I'm lonely, and just the constant roller coaster ride of emotional ups and downs. The thoughts are pleasant, and they're unpleasant. The sensations are amazing, and then they're horrendous. 
And then all the while the internal dialogue is trying to figure it out. There's like, there was like a war going on, trying to really manage the flow of my data, <laughs> manage the way my thoughts looked, manage the way my sensations looked, manage the way all of my emotions looked and felt. And, you know, that's just really a life of tension. That, that's not a nice way to live. And I reached the point where, you know, I wanted to do something about that. I became very aware of all of my internal dialogue. But when I came to this training, I heard the phrase of short moments of allowing thoughts to be just as they are. Thoughts arise as open intelligence. They're inseparable from open intelligence. They self-release back into this pristine space of open intelligence. So therefore, I didn't have to now correct the inner dialogue. I didn't have to go to the internal keyboard and start deleting thoughts, emotions, sensations, and start replacing them with better ones. I could try out short moments of allowing everything about my internal dialogue to be as it is. When I recognize that I'm getting all wrapped up in the internal dialogue there, I remembered short moments of resting naturally, allowing my thoughts to be just as they are. No better ones to have, no worse ones to have, just seeing that they naturally flow on by. And in that, there was immediate benefit. That was the first time I'd ever heard the instruction that my thoughts have no power to influence me my sense of life satisfaction and flourishing. When I come up on stage, if I have thoughts of anxiety and worry about what you're going to think about me, they won't understand me, there too I can rest and allow the descriptions to be exactly as they are, resolving in this pristine space of open intelligence. And from that vantage, there there is immediate benefit. I'm no longer at the whim. I'm not a victim of the thoughts of the day, of the moment. So each short moment we take, we tap into this beneficial nature of reality. I had all kinds of concepts, points of view, opinions, belief systems, assumptions about the nature of reality. I thought, it well, it must be compartmentalized. Maybe it's good over here and then this section of reality is not good. But all of it seamlessly blended with open intelligence, I started to realize how could there be a good reality, a bad reality, a neutral reality. When we rest as open intelligence for short moments, many times we see that this reality is purely beneficial. And we check that out in our direct experience. When we feel something really afflictive, remember the phrase, short moments of allowing the affliction to be as it is. If it's difficult to let something be as it is, we have the four mainstays, the four pillars, the support structure of balance view that enhances our practice of short moments many times. When it's absolutely impossible to let something be as it is just due to a, a habitual response. You know, if we're reacting on anger or if we, if we are um, analyzing or if we are just simply having trouble letting things be as they are, then we can reach for the balance view media. We have thousands of hours of talks from the founder of Balance View, Candace, and then all of the other trainers. We have participants sharing their direct, common, everyday life experience of how the Four Mainstays have enriched their lives to the point where they can allow everything be as it, to be as it is, and they recognize more and more benefit in their lives. So simply by hearing the experience of other people, we have texts and books where every line in the text and book completely confirms open intelligence as our beneficial reality, not pointing to something that maybe we'll achieve in the future, not lines about, well, if you eradicate your negativity, then you'll be 
open intelligence. Then you'll recognize the nature of reality. Then you'll be living as this nature of reality. It is never like that. It's never a pointing to something and vaguely describing what could happen to you, or is it written from a second-hand vantage? It's written, written from the vantage of open intelligence. So check out the website, check out the, the books and the audio and the videos, and in that way you don't even have to sit around and wonder what short moments are. You just start to align with your actual reality, your potent, easeful way of relating to yourselves and others. I mean, just think about a time when everything was so easy that you didn't have to think about it, if it was the right or the wrong way to be. Just think of a situation right now where you were totally at rest and there were no questions about anything whatsoever. And more and more that becomes our actual lived experience regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. <coughs> Another of the mainstays is the trainer. The trainer is somebody who has tested out short moments, really practice allowing data to be as they are, and seeing what that means very practically in their lives. So the trainer will share their direct experience, will help clarify any questions. The trainers are available in the training settings and the open meetings through the media. When we complete the Twelve Empowerments, one of the, the fundamental trainings of Balance You, then we have access to a personal trainer where we have email support and when we're in face-to-face -face settings, we can just have this very empowered relationship, a mentor-type <coughs> relationship. And then the fourth mainstay of the Balance You community, <coughs> community of people worldwide, not just limited to here in Goa, India, on all continents, people recognizing the nature of reality in their direct experience, authentically and honestly sharing about this. When you couple all of these, or put together all of these four mainstays, open intelligence is undeniable, obvious reality. The beneficial boon is found in this four mainstays lifestyle. And uh, the invitation is that we can check it out. We have open meetings here every day. We have lots of community events. We have a wonderful Clarity Kitchen where we can just hang out and actually look at how people are operating, seeing how they're employing the practice of short moments of allowing everything to be as it is and seeing the profound shifts in their lives and the way we communicate with each other an open, honest communication that is simply acknowledging another person as made of awesome rather than a collection of random data points. It becomes really hard to see people as good people, bad people, neutral people. It just, that concept is erased from our vocabulary. Instead, more and more we see everyone as open-ended knowledge and benefit creators and knowing that everyone has the capacity to rely on their most beneficial intelligence rather than acting out on all of their data streams, acting out on ha hatred, acting out on desire, acting out on arrogance and pride. Instead all of these data become the fuel to be of great benefit. So with my arrogance and pride I didn't have to work at trying to get rid of it. By allowing it to be as it is, I started to see it's actually my beneficial potency. When left as it is, naked, raw, organic. I mean, we, I hadn't thought that my arrogance was somehow, when I leave it as it is, I, it doesn't compel me to move one way or the other. It simply just becomes my power to be of great benefit. I, you know, everyone on this planet has some sort of arrogance and pride and So it's great that we recognize it, but in this training there's no work to be done with the datum, the data. There's no work to be done with it. We don't need to purify it, cleanse it, transform it. 
befriend it, anything. We let it, allow it to be as it is, and we see that it's the, it's inseparable from the nature of beneficial reality. It can't be found to have any kind of juice of its own. It is the juice of open intelligence. And you know, I'm just sharing from my experience because I see what it used to look like in my experience. It used to look like something powerful, negative, um, uncomfortable, and now it's not the case. It's really not the case. And I know many people around the world that this is the, they're a direct experience as well, where the, the data simply just become our power to be of great benefit to ourselves, to our family, our friends, and to the world.